Well, hello guys. We are gonna watch the Overwatch 2 World Cup Singapore Open Trials. I have no idea who is participating, but maybe you will see some people I know. Hope Singapore manages to make it to the World Cup. We would really love to see some good players from my country representing us on the world stage. So yeah, they just completed the New Zealand and Australia live stream before the Singapore one. Why do the Australian and Singapore teams not have a uh, custom icons for their teams? I see the New Zealand teams have their own icons. We need to up our our design game man. Our media game. Oh yes, I will be covering as much of the Singapore World Cup events, however there are. Yeah. I'll I'll try to do as much as I can on my channel. Let's go! If no boy plays Brigetta, Orisa, Torbjorn or Moira, I, won't, I, won't, I have no idea whether they'll be good or not. <laughs> I only play those four heroes. Match. I mean, this one, uh, look, I want to say on paper, maybe gives us the best chance of going uh, deeper actually than a 3-0. Yeah, I, I'm hoping we do see a couple more maps, at least a fourth. That would be great. And I think I think if anywhere can do it, I, I think this could be the series to bring that level there. Both teams got some really good players once again coming through. So I think this is going to be a fun match to watch. And yeah, I think we're going to be holding on to the edges of our seats. It was a 2-1 when these teams actually played each other a little bit earlier on in the bracket. So, something to be said there, maybe. Uh, yeah. I believe it was Le Seraphim that did come away with the win. But uh, I know you're keen to jump in here, Abstract. And, and Let's hope there's no steamrolling. Uh, but between these two teams, do you reckon there is a, a favourite? I would say that Le Seraphim is definitely the favourite. Mm -hmm. Because most of the members there, they have been, they're, they're constantly in the scene. They are pretty active. If we're talking about Soggy, Lumi, both of them are definitely star players of the Seraphim playing as uh, DPS and tank respectively. So when it comes down to all of them, like Lumi, Azalea... Okay, uh, I know these guys. Uh, I see them a lot when I play like my games. They play together, they have been playing They're definitely together. in like the GM Top 100 yeah, level. Even contenders give them quite a bit of an edge against I anything okay. But I don't yeah, think there are any brick players games, here. Uh, <laughs> so well, I won't be able to give much uh, input. Aparo? Oh, I mean, I've definitely seen Akame around, so, uh, but I, I think I've heard Azalea as well, so definitely so, some key players coming through, as uh, as Abstract was saying. Yeah, Soggy, um, a pretty well-known name within Australian contenders as well, so a little shout-out to, to him. I think he's he's won a title or two, got a title under his belt. Um, but uh, let's take a look at I Anything OK as well, because this is, um, you know, uh, another one to kind of keep an eye on. They've obviously made their way through to that grand final done i have no idea who this guy is uh, <laughs> no offense from the lower bracket quarter final so it was in the they are either much better than me or by or they are on a result, different tier i don't know abstract. It, it goes to show that there is a potential contest here i'm sure they are good mm -hmm. i mean I, I'm, 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 as vital. both of the, these two are definitely the ones that we gotta look out for but it comes down to i anything okay um the these two dps's they have been quite inactive especially for bubble kitty the last time we've seen him was back in 2020 while for oh that's why i haven't seen them because they are inactive so too long ago but i'm really looking out for vital because i'm not too sure how rusty 
mm. Pablo Kitty is and how much he plays in these casualty times. All right, well, that's a good point. But I uh, need to get uh, a little bit of an update as to what the map is going to be to start things off as well. Antarctica Peninsula. I'm sure they're all much better than me. And, you know, I think it's an interesting point that you're talking about these guys maybe not being super active because we're playing what is essentially a newer map. Maybe, maybe there's a bit of an element of a disadvantage there. Like if you're not really getting your reps in recently, you might not be super familiar with how the map plays out. Like, yeah, look, Overwatch is Overwatch. If you're a good player, you're still going to be a good player. But uh, I think, you know, Opara, obviously, if you're not getting those reps in, you, you may have some inconsistencies on these, these newer maps. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to how consistently you've been playing, like you said. So I think we Completely have to agree. keep an eye out, especially for Bubble Kitty. Bubble Kitty is a classic sort of contenders player back in the day. So I do think that, we are, that we're going to see them shine, just maybe not as bright as they used to be. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, I want to get your thoughts abstract on um, predictions. Which way are you leaning here? Is it going to be a, a quick series? Are you going to lean toward La Seraphim? It seems like that's the easy choice. That would be the easy choice. As much as I want to look up for I anything okay, I got to have to say that in the map of uh, Antarctica, the tank playout is going to be very important, especially from the past two series we've seen. The tank play a very huge role. And the fact that Lumi is playing as a tank versus uh, uh, CZWC as a tank, I gotta have to root for Lumi. He's definitely a lot more mechanically skilled. And with that said, Lesser FM should be able to take this game pretty easily. Okay, all right, pretty easy. What does that mean? Like 3-0? Oh. I mean, at least for this map. For this oh, map, okay. it should, they shouldn't okay. give any points. All right, 2-0 two, two for the first map. And then mm. from there, we'll see us. As far as the rest of the series goes, Apara, what's uh, what's your take? Are you expecting or, or hoping to see a quick uh, series? Or I mean, my my brain tells me I want to go to sleep, but I do want to see a really <laughs> close series. So I'm actually I'm actually rooting for the map five at the moment, but you know, it, it might take me a bit later. But I'm here for the Overwatch. Yeah, look, I think if you're uh, hoping for a, a fifth map, then you're probably having <laughs> to cheer for I anything okay, right? I mean, we've yeah. talked about it. They, they, they did have that uh, loss in the earlier stage of the bracket, but they were able to take a map. Shows that they can contest. Uh, I mean, I think there's definitely something to be said there, but the question will be whether or not, you know, it, 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 coming into this grand final, does the situation get to them? Or, you know, does maybe La Seraphim just step up a little bit? Could the argument be made that during the bracket stage, you have that extra life. You're like, whatever, we come into this game not really expecting too much trouble. Be a bit lax now that they've had that wake so up. So I'm guessing they are all GM players at the very least. Just that Seraphim are active players. And these guys are... These guys are probably better than me. I mean, they are definitely better than me. <laughs> but they are not so active, so... I think Seraphim will probably win it. When it comes down to Antarctica, that's not the, that's not the map that I would look out for. Maybe in the uh, couple few, a uh, couple few maps when we are looking at push. Uh, I'm just a noob guy. Okay. Um, do we have any sort of reads on which kind of compositions these guys are going to be going for? And maybe that's something you can discuss as we go into map number right. one. Very likely, both of these teams are going to play um, very much into a dive heavy setup. Both teams dive. Uh, regardless of the map, right? But there may be a couple of archetypes here and there. Maybe we'll be looking at Brigitte Zen and Soldier on one side, or maybe we'll be looking more on Brigitte on the other, depending on which map we're looking out for, right? If we're looking at Junker Town Havana or perhaps Circuit Royale, Widowmaker is definitely something that we should see. Um, looking at Sigma is definitely something we could see. But in this map itself, Ball, Winston, these things is something that we should be expecting. Yeah, Someone needs to play Brigitte. You, you I mean. really can just work those sort of um, positions really well when you've got the Winston out, you got the Wrecking Ball, everything coming through to sort of cause that displacement and take space here, especially when the point is so small. But at the same time, with how small the point oh, is, yes. we might see a Sigma come through. The you have a player. <laughs> very dominant here, but it looks like we've got a Ramatra and a Junker Queen. Okay, so looking at the Ramatra pick coming from I don't think okay, right? I mean, it's not yet uh, confirmed that they're going to be playing this, but regardless, we definitely do have a very good idea that there are people that still prefers to play the Ramatra, Lucio, and Kiriko. I don't know about like Overwatch League meta, but on the ladder right now, Brigitte is amazing. Just puts out a lot of kill pressure and putting up on top of a Lucio, you 
effectively enables Ramatra with all of that nemesis punches to make things super tough to work with, while the Tracer goes over the back line to create even more space. Well, we're gonna see how these two tanks clash here. Junker Queen versus Ramatra, and it looks like Junker Queen is just running into the back line, completely trying to chase them down. But Bubble Kitty is gonna be the one to take two to their name. SGY following up onto the Ramatra there, and and they should be able to clean up these last few picks and potentially if I anything okay get a few they might be able to take it back but La Seraphim are looking strong at the moment that is quite a surprise coming in from the side of I anything okay they made this uh, they made the start beautiful and they just did whatever that they gotta have to do so at this point in time La Seraphim they're just gonna have to work it out brawl and just brawl it out against the opponents as you can see Bubble Kitty is just going downtown yeah, absolutely. Both supports taken out immediately in that fight, and that does just lead to a complete collapse. Junker Queen, no healing to keep them alive, hmm. and then, yeah, the DPS just had no chance. That the brick switch to Kiriko. From Bubble Kitty. Well, one thing that we know, Bubble Kitty, yes, he has been inactive when it comes down to competitors in since... I feel like Brick and Lucio is not is a very good combo, especially on ladder, from my experience. Like, you definitely need at least one main healer. Is really hailed when we're looking at his tracer, but he hasn't really quite popped that off just yet. As for now, we're just looking at Soggy making his way in vital down. Soggy just going in on the Genji, and that's what we're talking about with that Lucio, the speed to just rush over everyone. There goes the Ramacha, there goes Paper Bag. Nobody's living through this Genji right now. Soggy cleaning that house. It's really rare to find like good Genji players high on the ladder nowadays. Very good spot at this point in time. In fact, one of the lowest tiered heroes within the DPS region. But the players here, they are just so mechanically skilled and they are so comfortable when it comes down to the Genji they, that they can definitely still make it work. Oh, absolutely. When you well, have the sim pick. You want to run it. The annihilation, though, is what's being run right now. Sound barrier to try and keep the team alive, and Soggy and Lumi putting in the work to make sure Ramacha is not getting the value they deserve here. Bubble Kitty is trying to follow up, and the Lucio is falling so low, but can't quite get that confirmed. Bubble Kitty has to take it. Sound barrier just keeping Ramacha up, but Soggy is going to clean them out. And there we go. Such a back and forth fight. Bubble Kitty just needs to take out Lumi here now, and they will get the point flip. Not sure about Jungle back. Queen, man. Okay I've seen her do very well, but also very poorly on like to top 500 level, so look at that vital. He's she's not a very popular tank pick. Zizos down first, then Azalea's gonna be down next, and perhaps we could even see Soggy going down, but it doesn't seem like that is gonna be the case. 55 seconds on to the timer already, and that is Iron Thing. see Ramatra and Orisa and Wrecking Ball are really good now. Yeah, those are some really good picks, you know, just taking them early so that you build up a little bit of uh, time. But now, a Kitsune Rush coming out from both sides, Blade as well. Soggy just going in deep, taking out Vital. Can they find a second? Gonna go for the Ramatra. Ramatra falling low, but does manage to get saved by a boop from Ayako there. Unfortunately, this Ayako is good, man. Now, Soggy finally getting the pick onto Ramatra. And that point, it's been so back and forth abstract. Definitely a big Genji's like this are the reason why you need to play Brick <laughs> if you're on his you're on the enemy team. Everyone else while completely ignoring CZWC onto the Ramatra, leaving the Ramatra for a little while later. The main thing right now is just we're gonna have to wait most for underrated out for Ramatra, and support combo on ladder right now is Moira Brick. Out, speed boost, that's what we want to see. But hold on a second, is we're just gonna be looking at the division of the map set up by Azalea. You play Moira Brick, right? You just kill every Genji that comes to you. Okay with Ayoko, take him down first. Yeah, Soggy taking out Ayako early, using the Photon Barrier to their advantage, and there was a potential for a back cap to try and get it swapped over, but doesn't come through. Lumi trying to get aggressive over time now, Sound Barrier has to come out. The Seraphim just wanting to get these last few picks. Out comes the Rampage as well. They want to confirm this fight and confirm it well, and that is exactly what they do. Definitely tough plays to play for anything okay. Bubble Kid is down, almost getting himself the bomb. The pulse bomb would have been great for that upcoming fight, but they just ran out of time. 86 is to 100%. Well, I don't think okay. Getting themselves 86% is definitely a lot higher than I originally expected. So let's be honest here. I don't think okay. They can definitely hold a candle against Lesser FM. 
Yeah, they're definitely showing that they are here to play and they are up to the power of La Seraphim, which is really exciting to see. You know, Bubble Kitty and Vital, like you said, vital players to uh, come through and watch and it's working out really well. But we've also got to talk about like Ayako. Ayako's been playing really well on that Lucio, making sure that... Yes, another brick player. <laughs> sort of CWC, C, oh no, so he switched. Really fun to watch I Anything OK. Yep, I anything okay is not gonna be changing. I really just want to see Brick players. They're still gonna be sticking to their guns and leaving it to that. While Le Seraphim, they are almost mirroring I anything okay with that Ramatra, uh, Lucio, and Kiriko trio while adding in their own spice with the Junkrat as well as the Soldier. How is this gonna be panning out? Well, we shall see because there's so much projectile that's gonna be flying through with Bubble Kitty getting himself a total of two. Well, CZWC is already gonna be taken down. So it's kind of like a one for two trades so far, but the thing is, I anything okay does not have a tank in front of them. Yeah, that was a really good opening couple of picks for Bubble Kitty, and they're searching for a couple more. They want to clean up this fight and take it for themselves, and focusing down the Ramatra is critical here. However, that Kiriko keeping the health up. It so is putting in a lot of work here now we do see cwc back in the fight but bubble kitty falling this is actually starting to turn the way of la seraphim they managed to wait it out get those couple of picks and now soggy all on the board on that soldier cleaning up the fight we are looking at a change now. Azalea is on the tracer and Sagi is now on the soldier. With a great hit scan, a bit, uh, two hit, great hit scan players from the side of Lister of him. Azalea and Sagi should be able to take down their opponents pretty darn nicely. Even if Ayoka is trying to tread himself all across and around the point, that will definitely not escape the eyes of Azalea and Sagi. Right now, it's quite rare to see people play soldier nowadays. So, like, people usually play soldier or Kesabi. Yet, it's still magic stay alive until now. Oh man, they really wanted to take out Soggy and they got it in the end. Ramatra battle going the way so far of CWC until Azalea takes them out there. Now it is going to come down to Bubble Kitty alone on that point. You probably just want to try and get back to a couple of your friends, but I guess your friends are turning up to try help this fight. We do see Lumi hiding so low and actually they're going to get aggressive onto it. Lumi getting into the fight, doing so many good punches. Nemesis form can be devastating. They do manage to clean up Lumi in the end and these fights have been so back and forth chaotic so far and now we have Katsune <laughs> Rush coming out it really just paves the way for the rebel members for the side of anything okay paper bang and Bubba kitty may be taken down but season WC Ayako as well as vital they're just right back in here the annihilation was almost available for season WC to pop up but he went down right after that came out the Seraphim are looking so much stronger hmm. right now. They're, they're playing so perfectly. I think Story if I were on I, anything Every okay, I would probably swap to, to Orisa. From Lumi this time, CWC is going to respond with the own, but there's attack. And probably play like a, well. a slower, so more defensive game. I probably, you probably wouldn't need Lucio. You might just go like double main healers. Dropping every single ultimate but once again, I'm a noob, so don't listen to me. <laughs> I, but that's what I would do if I was playing on ladder. Round of this map. Understandably, it is a very, very disgusting ultimate play. Every single one of them have got their ultimate. In the meantime, for the opponents, they don't have got the sound bear to even counteract against the annihilation. So it's pretty much expected. They just went all out. Yeah, that was really fun to watch that match there. And we do have Elfish back. How, how did you find that, Jordan? Yeah, well, to be honest, I thought it was going to be a little bit closer after that first uh, first round. It seemed like, you know, I anything okay. They're in here with a chance. But uh, La Seraphim just absolutely owned them in the, the second round. Uh, it sort of gives me the, the feeling that La Seraphim is a quite a momentum-based team, right? Once they get the ball rolling a little bit, they can really run with it and um, just sort of clean house in in whatever situation they find themselves in. So um, look, one and zero for the Seraphim. You, you were right in your prediction so far, abstract that um, maybe they're looking like the better team. I'm kind of convinced. Couple of nice moments. Uh, Bubble Kitty, I thought had a couple of really cool moments there for um, I anything okay. But yeah, unfortunately just not really enough being put together 
for them in, in map number one. So hopefully things will change in map two, which is where we're going to be headed in just a second. We will take a short break first, though, but uh, we'll be back for the Singapore Grand Final map number two in just a second. If there's a really good Tracer on the enemy team, there's no shame in playing top, you know. But once again, I am a noob top 500 ladder player, so don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure all these guys are way better than me. They they actually play in like coordinated teams. I'm, I'm just like solo queue, so you know, I'm a noob. Welcome back on into the Overwatch World Cup 2023 Trials. It's APAC Group B and we're into, you know, the last uh, last couple of rounds maybe of uh, our evening. We do have the Singapore Grand Final for you at the moment and it's currently 1-0 and zero for La Seraphim over I Anything OK. Are we going to be following suit with Australia and New Zealand headed in the direction of a 3-0? Well... Based on that first map, maybe the answer is yes. But let's take a look at what our second map is going to be. Circuit Royale, first time tonight. We'll get that one for you. Abstract, what do you reckon? I mean, was there enough there for I Anything OK to give you a bit of hope in their chances of taking a map here? I gotta have to say, that could be a very good chance here. We're looking at Circuit Royale, definitely a, uh, a huge map. When it comes down to dive, it really depends on how both of these teams were to play, right? I would want to see, once again, the Sigma, the Widowmaker coming in. And I, if I Anything OK is able to play that well and really just bring down Lesser Refn's own Widowmaker, I think that they should be able to create good enough space for them to even push out the uh, the payload as far as they could. Apara, have you got the same faith? It seems like to me it's going to be a relatively uh, one-sided grand final. We'll head into map two and you can let me know what you think. Yeah, let's just hope it's yeah, not I, the complete steamroll. I advocate, but it's starting to get quite quite scary here for I, anything okay. But I mean, a map like Circuit Royale is a complete change of pace here. There's so many long sight lines that you can work at. You do kind of have to play a completely different play style. So mm -hmm. we'll see the like, the Widows coming out most likely, especially on that second point. We'll see snipers like Widow, Hanzo, Sojourn. Uh, that high ground defense is really good so yeah I, I think if anything i anything okay could potentially bring quite a strong performance here this is definitely i anything okay's pick when it comes down to circuit royal i do want to see exactly what would they bring onto the board here we're talking about bubble kitty as well as vital both of these are definitely dps that's on on crack both of them are strong, and we've seen Bubble Kitty's own Azalea. He knows what he wants to do, and such, if he does want to play something along the lines of Surgeon, then we should be able to see him just... Alright, we have a Moira player. <laughs> single... Honestly, Moira is so underrated right now. And there we go, we've got some Widows sort of peeking out on the field at the moment. Yoko and Vital both looking like they want to play it. I'm really excited to see these Widow duels. They're going to be, they're going to be a lot of fun. Um, coming out but do you think we're gonna see that hog pick stay the same or do you think that's gonna swap off i really hope that they swap it off i don't think that they will want to play this hog i can't think of the hog is really quite bad now hog, to be very honest while lesser of him definitely no they swapped out moira <laughs> of what right they're playing soja mercy Sigma, Baptist, and Yana, Maybe they have a better they shot now. They all just complement each other so well. They will be able to set up from far range and they will be able to work onto the front lines and the back lines very effectively. As you can see, I anything okay, they are definitely going to have a lot of issues, especially when the Discord is right onto the heads of Sigma. The best that it can come from wow. them is literally the Mercy. Mercy does have a new change at where anyone is below 50%, they'll be able to get a lot of help in. But because of the Discord, that's not going to play a very big part. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, what a shot from Vital right there. Just down the sight line, searching for it. And you can Whoa. see Anything OK actually taking a bit of the push here. They went to the Sigma. Obviously, they now have Tuata in for um, CZWC. So uh, it's good to see these changes. <laughs> I didn't even know this was a Widow sniping spot. 
So with the Sigma in, with Vital onto the Widowmaker, Bubble Kitty right onto the Surgeon. Makes sense that they will be able to do it well, but the only thing that they have got it different is that they have a Mercy in place of a Baptiste. So they do not have the uh, Regenerative Burst anymore, they do not have got the Immortality Field, but of course they do have a very constant amount of healing. But in the meantime, we're just going to be looking at a duel between the Sigma, and it kind of seems as though Soggy went off to the back line and popped right off. Destroyed everyone from the side of I. Anything okay? I think the problem is so when you have one team that's so better than the other and you try to like mirror comp, the better team's always gonna win. So instead of trying to mirror comp, you it would be probably be better to play a completely different comp and and hope that it works, you know? Like normally the better team would still win, but at least you have a chance, you know, if you do something different that the enemy team doesn't expect. Value. Lumi, however, getting taken down early. This could be huge for I anything okay. They want to start pushing in and getting the value. Bubble Kitty knowing that you don't want to fight that Genji too hard there, but they're gonna take them out. And here we go. First point kept to I anything okay. Great progress from the side of I anything okay. They with the payload already on the first point, and they are pushing their advantage onto Lesser FM, pushing them all the way backwards. This is gonna be a tough point to play. I'm rooting for I anything okay now because I just want this to be a competitive game, you know? I don't want I don't want steamroll. This will be tough, let's be honest here. But with the single pickup coming from the side of Zizo onto Vital, that could very potentially change the the game around. Oh man, these picks are just coming through for the Seraphim right there. And I don't know if you saw it, but uh, Lumi tried to pop a Gravitic Flux but got bolded by Tuata. And now we can just see the Seraphim still run over everyone, even without the Flux. What? Soggy going in for those last two kills on the DPS. And amazing to see, even though the Flux was used, they, uh, they still got the value out of that fight. With the payload almost halfway point now. And there's 3 minutes and 15 seconds left on the side of I anything, okay? They can definitely regroup themselves and see what exactly they would want to do onto the next round. When it comes down to Ultimate Economy, we have got 3 in the in the hands of Lesser Rafim. I don't think, okay, have got 3 as well. So, a lot of these key Ultimates that we should be able to expect. But the main thing is an engagement coming in from Tutau with a quick little out. There's our Gravitic Flux coming out, shut down by the Transcendence. However, Bubble Kitty doesn't care. Bubble Kitty's just going to get their kills with the Overclock. There goes Zexo, and now Soggy going down. This will be I Anything's Okay. I Anything Okay's fight to win here. <laughs> They're just going to run down, see if they can get any extra stragglers. Definitely their game to win right now for I Anything Okay. It's just rolling the payload, and nothing from the side from the side, uh, from the side of Lesser FM is just going to be stopping them as they work their way onto the second point with no contest whatsoever. Yeah, look at that. Second point taken, and now you're going to be feeling good because that second point can be quite hard to attack. So now they want to get a couple more extra picks, and Bubble Kitty's trying to get aggressive here. The, the, the defense of the Seraphim, they know how to push in aggressively to stop the um, stop the push of I Anything OK. Now they've got that advantage, uh, that advantage in position here. Transcendence to once again save from the Flux, but the Flux gets bolted again. These Fluxes are just getting shut down left right and center paper bag gonna take soggy down with the pistol whipping there you gotta feel good when you take a genji out as mercy and now vital and bubble kitty just once again getting those last few picks gonna have to say that paper bag is doing a great job as the mercy just constantly oh, yeah. flying by one after another and really keeping a massive uptime when it comes down to the heals or perhaps even when it comes down to the damage department with three minutes left onto the clock the sub three minutes vital just slowly getting his way onto the side of the seraphim and just restraggling them as much as possible this is the toughest part of the push right now and they're gonna have to group themselves up as the seraphim they're slowly gonna be losing out this round if they allow anything okay to even get the third point. Here comes the blade from Soggy. It's gonna find two. Oh! Can it get the third? There it is. And there's a fourth. That is a team kill. Thanks to Soggy's blade. A single Honestly, I would, if I were the enemy team, I would just play Brick MRI and, and just target the Genji. may very well be shattered, to say the very least. Lissarafim will now be able to push that advantage just by a little bit, get themselves onto the high ground, but it does seem like as though that's not working. 
Yeah, look at that immediate turnaround. Bubble Kitty just overclocking and taking that fight. Vital having to come through and help out as well as Bubble Kitty get, did get taken down. But man, they just turned that fight around in an instant. Two Tau, okay. This man is built a little bit different when it comes down to playing onto the Sigma. But perhaps we'll be able to get a little bit of a better understanding once the sides are swapped. Lumi, on the other hand, is, does seem like he's having a little bit of a problem. But when it comes down to the duel between the Sigmas, it is fair to say that the, um, the Sigma with a pocket at Mercy will do a lot better when it comes down to the healing department. Oh man, the Flux nearly kept that point and they are still getting the picks they need. Soggy and Yoko taking down, it's just the Zen on point right now. Flux coming through by Lumi, can it get shut down? It's gonna get shut down by a Transcendence at least. And now it's just Lumi trying to keep the stool going. Soggy back on the Tracer, trying to go deep, take out some of the support. All right, all right. Gonna touch, and that's gonna be 1 minute 11 on the board uh, for a anything okay. <sighs> I see all of people putting the Singapore pledge in the, the chat. And the percenters, they're always going to be played for one another. So let's be honest here, when it comes down to Lestorafin's uh, trying to work with anything or perhaps even high anything, okay? We shouldn't expect much value from the Flux. All in all, that transcendence from the start of Lestorafin will always be used at the right time and it's really just reserved for the Flux. And that must definitely be really annoying for the side of Tuatau. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely one of those battles of like, I've either got to land this boulder or we lose Transcendence, but I, ultimately Transcendence is going, as you said, going to be used to counter the Flux, so they're both nothing ults at that point, but if you can keep the Transcendence for a blade, that, that's really handy, so mm. it's going to be interesting to see how the Seraphim try to take this attack now. They're still opting to go for the Genji. Meanwhile, I anything okay? Running this double sniper that's worked wonders for them so far. I do want to see what they can play around here this time. Let's start off in, they have opted to go uh, out of I really the like punish the Genji. I just go like Paul, Moira, Brick, and then the Genji will just die in like one and a half seconds. Just now getting himself the 4k with the dragon blade perhaps this time we'll be looking at a 5k and very effectively push the payload even faster than i didn't think okay could here we go both teams out and about this uh payload is moving and it looks like i anything okay are happy to give them a little bit of space because they want to play this long sight line and oh my gosh oh. Go found by duato uh, so that is just huge to start off this fight for i anything okay if they can get a couple more picks here which it looks like they're going to chase down lumi yep lumi stuck on a staircase can't do too much sigma is one of those things Good right stuff. at the low levels okay. is honestly quite bad but at the High levels is so good. He's down when it comes down to automatic economy. I didn't think okay has got the upper hand. Vital that is playing on the widow is definitely gonna be fighting against his arch nemesis. That is going to be the Genji. But Ayako comes in play. Gets a headshot right down to the Zogi, pretty done effectively. And now Lazarapin will have one DPS shot. Here we go, yeah, they're just gonna play out that time, try build up a little bit of ultimate percentage until your Genji is back here. The Vital is searching for these heads. Soggy now back and you can see Yoko just Wait, that's a really good Widowmaker. I think position, that key Seraphim so just decided not to bother trying to contest here. Widowmaker with him. Again, <laughs> taking up Baptiste, Yoko now falls to Bubble Kitty. Lumi's doing a lot of work, but is it gonna be enough? Even Mercy wants to try take them down, oh. but finally Finally, the Seraphim are looking good for this push. It's all about the back lines. Do it's some of the best Widow Maker maps in the game. Can't do nuts from that point onwards. The Seraphim has finally taken control of the payload and getting that escorted onto the next point. From this point onwards, it's also going to be pretty darn tough. But looking at how they have been building themselves up, I think that they will have one filled, uh, one filled push just because of the others that's available from the side of Iron Anything OK. Or perhaps a fight that will run out for so long that every single one of the members from the side of the Seraphim will have their ultimate uptime. Here comes the Flux, dodges the boulder, but there's a lot of damage and I don't think they connected onto anyone because of the amount of damage that was coming out so another flux down the drain so far here Whoa. nano is ready and available it didn't come to much unfortunately but they did manage to get the push anyway and yoko is going to do this clean up here soggy is taken out but yoko can do the work instead 
Not much of a big play when it comes down to the nano. We were pretty much hoping for a nano blade, but the uh, blade didn't really come in fast enough, and the nano was just. So Jin is just so good at the high level. It's really just point or kind of broken. <laughs> so the next thing you gotta have to do is just reserve it a little bit longer and wait for the best time to actually pop it off. I mean, let's be fair here. So he did manage to get a 4K without a nano blade after all. So we can pretty much keep that in mind and see how that's going to be. Working out for this Oh, what a start to that fight. Bubble Kitty just going in with the overclock. Lumi's gone. Azalea as well. Taking four. So it's literally like the only DPS in the whole game that can, can, can consistently pull things, pull out things like that, you know. Like the constant fall kills. It's really quite broken. Bubble Kitty, this guy. His, whatever he had for lunch, I I'm having that tonight. But whatever it is, I don't think, okay, they are just working their way. This guy is not stopping, and all of his laser shots are just so darn on point. Oh man, cat supremacy right now. Bubble Kitty going off here, taking out Yoko once again. And look at I, I, I anything okay, go. They're using that high ground uh, advantage to a T. And this is what I talked about. This point can be so hard to push, especially when a team utilizes that high ground. Well, let's start off him now. They are having a big issue. I didn't think OK has been pushing Lesser of him back so much and they are constantly losing in duels and losing in all the team fights that we are looking out for. Three ultimates up for I didn't think OK while meanwhile Lesser of him has got four. Perhaps this flux is gonna change some game here. Ouch. Oh, Soggy going in, taking out two. That's just pure Genji mechanics. <laughs> they should really, they should really just play to counter the Genji, you know. Force the Genji to switch. Five. Worked amazingly. I, didn't think okay I mean, they probably the still team lose, team but you know, at least I don't know. I feel like they have a better shot. Making their way over to the second point, but unfortunately, we're not gonna get the gratification of make the, of them going to the second point right now, as the game is pretty much paused real quickly. But from this time onwards, we can just kind of like go for a quick little rundown, uh, taking a look at the ultimate economies and have a really What's going on? Idea. Why is it paused? Offensive and defensive. Lester and Fim has got one for one. I and Think OK have got both and two defensive ultimates. Yeah, it is looking like we're probably going to be keeping an eye on this blade from Soggy here. And... I assume Ayako will pop the Transcendence to counter it here. They should know that Lumi's just used the Flux recently, um, mm -hmm. so they should know it's not available on the board. But if Soggy can still get a couple of picks quickly before Transcendence comes out, or, or potentially find some targets that aren't in the Transcendence, they should be able to get this cap pretty well. The main thing is Ayako needs to go down before the Nanoblade even comes out, or else you're just throwing out two ultimates for one and that is of course not that much of a valuable trade i didn't think okay has been on a climb and they are on a tear in fact they are men on a mission like uh, like they're literally possessed and they're not stopping yeah absolutely i mean it's really fun to watch how i anything okay are performing now elfish what's your what's your opinions on the match so far Oh, this one's a pretty tight one, isn't it, right? You got, what, like a minute and a half or a little bit over that for point B here. Um, if that gets capped out, I can still see a world where, uh, you know, the map gets finished with time available and then we do head into the OT. But, um, yeah, I mean, it sort of feels like it's kind of hanging on a, on a knife's, knife's edge at the moment. So there's a, a lot to think about. Um, looks like we've got a bit of extra time to think about that as well. So we'll take a, a short break here, ladies and gents. So, but don't go too far away. Hopefully we'll be jumping back into the map in just a sec.
possibly let pass. No, Overwatch 2 is such a different game from Overwatch 1. I, I think because I anything okay is mostly Overwatch 1 pro players, so they probably haven't really adapted to Overwatch 2 yet. But like I said, they are all much better than me, so <laughs> I'm not one to judge. But Seraphim is definitely comprised of like active GM players. I see them all the time. Probably Singtel, Singtel crashed their internet. Like, th this past few weeks, I don't know if you guys know this, like, you guys in Singapore, but Singtel had, like, some submarine cable damage. So, a lot of, a lot of, uh, people in Singapore have had trouble connecting to, I, I think, specifically US-based servers. And I think, I think because Blizzard is based in the US, so like even Steam and yeah, a lot of games are all affected by the submarine cable damage. Did the timer just go back up? What the heck? I think they're trying to fix their uh, technical issues. So whoever wins this trials, I don't think that's like the final team that will be representing Singapore in the World Cup, but I think they will be guaranteed a chance to like all the members will be guaranteed a chance to to be part of the team that competes in the World Cup. But it's gonna be so weird. It's gonna be so weird if like I don't know, all these people that, especially the Seraphim people, like, I see them in my matches all the time, it's, it's gonna be so weird that... Okay, so here, here I was thinking that, like, I wouldn't even bother trying to compete in this because, like, I, I thought that all the players were just, like, so far out of, out of my league, you know. But then now, to actually see people that I play often with in here, I'm like, maybe I should have tried, but... Nah, it's okay. I much prefer creating content than competing. I mean, I hate I hate playing comp, comp nowadays. Like the queue times are like freaking thirty minutes, and then they just end up putting you in games with like hundred ping because you get matched with like Korean players. Because the the GM top five hundred pool in Singapore is actually really small, so usually like you after you queue for like half an hour, they just put you in like overseas games. So. Yeah, the the player base definitely has shrunk a lot since the Overwatch, like since season one, definitely, like at, at least in competitive. So, yeah, the queue times are getting quite high now. So I don't play comp that much nowadays because I have I have a lot of things to do with my time. <laughs> Can't afford to be like queuing half an hour just to play games that last like five to ten minutes. Quick play, yeah. Actually, there are way more players in quick play than comp. Like, even even though there's like matchmaking in quick play, like I can get quick play games in like under a minute. Yeah. So there are still a lot of players. It's just that the like the competitive community is kind of, or at least in like GM level and above, it's kind of dying out. But that's I'm fine with it. I think Overwatch should be enjoyed as a casual game anyway. Welcome back to the Overwatch World Cup 2023 trials. Appreciate your patience. We've just had some some issues, as you can probably guess, but uh, working through them. Hopefully, we'll be back in the game relatively quickly. Scoreline currently: Lesserafim 1-0 over I Anything OK in the Singapore Grand Final. But with that said, uh, Map Two is actually going pretty good for I Anything OK. So. 
Maybe there's a world that, that ties up. Maybe there's a world still where we go to 2-0. We have to wait and see as we head into game. Let's jump back on into it. It's Circuit Royale and La Seraphim on the attack trying to capitalize on an okay defense. Here we go. Yeah. And what we were talking about before was a Xenolt ready for the blade, but unfortunately that Xenolt is now gone. So we might be seeing a, maybe a Valkyrie just try to shut down this blade, but Soggy is going to have a lot of free reign. However, Bubble Kitty opening up early, taking out Azalea. What the heck? Why the Zen say DC? Oh no, not the Zen. Wow, what, their tank is DC. Tuatau is not exactly back since uh, that previous fight. Maybe he's oh, just messed up. waiting for everyone to respawn until until then, then he will come back out. But because of number one, the lack of Zen out, and number two, the lack of the front lines, Lesser of him took that round by the enemy's throat and took it really fast. So now, Lesser of him didn't even have to expand a single ultimate just to get themselves to the second point. And from this point onwards, there could be a very high. Dude, that's so unfair. Just going to steamroll forward. Yeah, you can see some Maybe lost by technical blade. difficulties. Gonna come out here. And there's that blade going for the Zen, going for the uh, wow. the Sigma even. There's the mercy. Dude, this is and trying to clean up Dude, this guy is the widow. That is sick. A beautiful blade. Soggy is great at them and I mean, yeah, this payload free to just glide on through. That's the map awareness that we are talking about from the side of Soggy. But before the game even ended, it kind of seems as though Tuatau immediately changed himself over to the ball. And now they're just going to be wrecking over as they Im immediately get a stun down onto Paper Bag. But unfortunately, they could not touch the point or rather the payload in time to stop the payload from moving through. Yeah, that was that, that that was quite a bit of favor due to those ults being lost, everything like that. So you just got to go on a complete spree right there. But it was really fun to watch either way. Very impressive uh, gameplay from Soggy and mechanical skill. Um, mm -hmm. I guess one thing that you kind of almost would think is Soggy is almost like a sponge here, absorbing the kills one after another. The, Soggy is just they really need to counter the Genji. Because they really need to. As though he couldn't execute that Nanoblade, being the front line, uh, being in the front line, everyone literally have got eyes on him. But somehow he still managed to make it work. Mercy quick, uh, got a quick little dive away from Zenyatta just to avoid the collateral. But in the end of the day, Soggy I like the sim pick. He have got great map awareness. He knew exactly where he's going around. That pretty much just shows how familiar he is. Yeah, like the Reinhardt. Here in this map. Now, what do you think about this Reinhardt swap from Lumi? They obviously wanting to play up close and personal. Reinhardt's really uh, good now in the meta. To try and shut down this attack from I anything okay is, uh, but yeah, interesting, cool. Wow. I don't think that we should be saying anything about this right now because this is definitely something new. I anything okay. They don't know anything just yet. They're going for a 2 2 split with two in the middle and two <laughs> the heck? And just from that, they immediately popped one person in. Tao Tao is swapped out for CZWC for some reason. So they didn't have got a tank in the front lines as the doors opened. One person's taken out, which is Bubble Kitty. So that is going to heck? stall I anything it's okay like... even more. Even when. They I think they're having a lot of technical issues. Play in the front lines a lot faster and a lot it's messed easier. up. Yeah, that, that definitely, it seems like Tua Tao's uh, computer or internet is struggling there. So it does sound like uh, we may be moving into another pause. Welcome back, Elfish. Hello, how's it going? This is why trying, like competitive games need to be played in LAN environments. A lot of, a lot of shouldn't play online, so. man. Um, I don't want to say exactly where we're at at this point. So let's just, look, I tell you what, while there's so many things to figure out, I think we should just head to a quick break and we'll get it all sorted. We'll come back to, to you, let you know exactly what's going on uh, as soon as possible. Break again? We just had a break. <laughs> just had a break like what? Three minutes ago? Two minutes ago? Man. Yes, we are really showing the world in Singapore's internet speed. I really wish like they had organized this in person. I would have loved to go down and like film this in person.
guys, welcome back to the Overwatch World Cup 2023 Trials. This is APAC Group B. We're in the Singapore Grand Finals. I have some bad news, I suppose. If you're an I Anything OK fan, definitely bad news. If you're a La Seraphim fan, maybe it's good news. But for everyone in general, probably not ideal. I Anything OK had to forfeit that last map. They made a player change mid-game, which they're not allowed to do. Um, obviously, given the circumstances, you can kind of understand what they were trying to do there. There were some lag issues, DC issues, whatever. Well, this messed up. And see what you can do, but not allowed. So we're heading into map number three now with the score. That was like the one zero. map that, Seraphim, that it, it felt like they were winning. For I anything okay. Obviously, moving into Colosseo, this messed up. It sort of feels like there's got to be some kind of tilt now for I anything okay, right? It really is a difficult situation to work with given the circumstances here for I anything okay. So this now is where they're really going to have to dig deep, find some mental fortitude. Hopefully they can make that player change going into game number three and, um, you know, just go on from there without any issues and play their best. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, we are going to move from the past, look at the future, mm. or rather go into the present. We are going to be looking at Colosseo and of course it's going to be a push map. I'm going to be pretty much... I'm 50-50 for this one. I didn't think OK has showed their dominance in the previous game, and I'm really excited to see what they will be able to uh, bring onto the table against mm. Lester in this Colossal map. Well, the question is, can they stave off the third 3-0 of the night? We'll jump into map three and find out if Lester. I think I, anything OK was yeah, winning yeah, that okay. the previous map because they, they were winning the Widow fight. This is going to be an interesting match to see. I anything okay? Definitely are going to be fighting their hardest. And I mean, if Bubble Kitty keeps playing at the level that they're playing, we could see a bit of back and forth. We do still see a lot of value from those sniper types like Sojourn, like Widow, like Hanzo. So if Bubble Kitty keeps bringing that pressure, it might go I anything okay's way. Mm -hmm. It could very much possibly be, right? Listen, Rafim, I think it's relatively fair for us to um, assume that Soggy is probably going to play his Genji. In the previous game, he's definitely paid quite a bit of dividends, and he has been doing and doing very well. So the Nano Blade is definitely something that I think OK doesn't really have an answer to, aside from the Zenyatta. So if anything, they're going to have to play around the Zenyatta. So what exactly they're going to go for here? Well, we're going to have to see. Yeah, and no, it's interesting. Soggy currently on the Soldier. We have seen Soggy do really well on Soldier as well on Antarctica Peninsula. So we might see that come through here. Meanwhile, CZWC on that Wrecking Ball, which we've also seen shine in a couple of different matches. So if they commit to these hero picks, this could be a really interesting match to, to behold. As now the clock picks down 20 seconds in until the robot is unlocked the end members of iron thing okay has already been setting themselves up and preparing to go and rumble while meanwhile czwc is already right within the halls and is just working his way to really obstruct the play the, the players of iron thing okay and try to see whether he's able to create any more space yeah, trying to roll Yoko into I Anything OK's team. CZWC can't quite confirm the kill here, but they do have Robot Presence right now. Push spot slightly in I Anything OK's uh, favor. Question is, can the picks come through, especially with that pressure onto CZWC? Does manage to get back to the team to stay alive, but Yoko with that knife pulling them back in no picks oh there we go ayako taking out soggy early it's a good start lumi though following up taking out vital yoko working hard to get a couple more picks and now the seraphim are looking good on the board it definitely seems as though they're having a little bit of difficulty i wonder why no boy plays orisa orisa is actually really really good now even though she she got a range nerf the front line that can really work against the Yoko. I mean, fortunately, they do have got the Kiriko, so at least when it comes down to any of the... Which is actually really good against Shaka Queen. From... Oh wait, they do not have, have the end heal. So, at least they do, do have the Kiriko. Suzu will be able to keep them up online as much as possible. But right now, CZWC is he's really getting a little bit of a danger in here, while Lumi is just working his way onto the Genji, very close to getting himself the Dragon Blade. We end up CZWC, well, I don't think that is gonna go anywhere far. Yeah, Lumi does manage to take down CZWC, is going to opt to go back to the team. Bubble Kitty finally finishing off Yoko there, and that was a good fight for I Anything OK. They managed to get those supports out early and could push the bot, but because of how long it took, most of the teams grouped up now. 
Blade coming out from Lumi, trying to see how many they can get. Not quite as good as a Soggy Blade, but it's still going to cause enough chaos to push I Anything OK back. Yep, it's all about the zoning that uh, Lumi managed to pull off for his team, but unfortunately not quite enough, if I would say. I didn't think okay, currently do not have Bubble Kitty at this point in time, or Last of Him is just going to be pushing everyone else off as much as possible. As you can see right now, Kitsune Rush is just going to pave the way forward. Vital trying to get as much value from the Kitsune Rush as possible. Lumi getting aggressive, trying to deflect some of those shots. Sound barrier now, you know you can get aggressive. And overclock from Vital is gigantic. Oh. There you go, Lumi taking out, trying to find Yoko. But Yoko and Zeta actually taking out two on their own there. M evening up this fight for the Seraphim. And if they can keep that going, they might be able to get a little bit more push bot arm um, distance. Yoko having a little bit of difficulty when it comes down to the front line. See that WC is super tanky and they're just holding the opponents right by the throat. With a tracer together with the ball, the front lines and the pack lines of, I, uh, of uh, Lesser of him is definitely gonna get a little bit of an issue. One by one, it's kind of seems as though we're getting a bit of a good trade between these two teams. The robot is getting quite a bit of difficulty as well, deciding who should be pushing for. Yeah, that robot's definitely asking which way are we going. Finally, I anything okay. Kind of winning that really long drawn out fight and hopefully getting it to a point where they get the value. I do think the Seraphim though might be able to get in just on time. Perhaps, I suppose. Saw wow. Very quickly, they managed to bring one down from the side of Vital, but unfortunately, he that's why you never stand still, guys. <laughs> Open things up, but it doesn't seem like we are getting get, gonna get much dividends just yet. Just pushing the enemy team away. I anything okay? Popping that minefield onto the push bot, trying to get them off so that we can potentially just keep pushing. Uh, here we go. Trying to find a couple of good picks. Z Yoko searching, but Zexo is going to be taken down by the minefield. Didn't oh. see it. Just behind them, and with Bubble Kitty taking out Lumi as well, it is looking like La Seraphim might be able to try and get this point back now. They are definitely going to be trying to go go for that as the robot is just going to be moving backwards and it kind of seems as though bu oh bubble kitty just going to go straight down but never mind because vital they managed to come right back in for a quick little trade on that forward i ain't think okay right now they do have a good defensive ultimate coming from the side of ayo oh that was, that was a really good uh, combo blade, if that is going to be the way so a good trade between both of which the dragon play pops up Lumi takes vital down as he's just going to be moving on forward right next to kiriko two men down with a single ultimate i will call value on that yeah 100 percent. that's what you want out of your genji blades and so far, it is now looking like La Seraphim gonna start taking some value in this push here. The question is, is can I anything okay uh, sort of group up and take another fight? The point lead is now on La Seraphim as it looks like CZWC is just harassing anybody they can. Mm -hmm. Out comes the Kitsune Rush. All they gotta do is just be very aggressive and very annoying as I anything okay pops off immediately with your pulse bomb as well as the sound barrier. Zizo gets himself too at this point in time and Lesser FM they're just pushing I anything okay away as much as possible with Vital being the last member down Ouch. and taken down by Yoko. What a just solid fight for the Seraphim and now they've really got that lead. Halfway point here, abstract. This could be huge. It is definitely gonna be huge. I mean, I anything okay, all they gotta do is just be as annoying as they can. Working around with the ball and the tracer combo is what they would expire to want to have. And whenever they have the minefield, that's when they would take the game over. Soggy trying to take this fight with attack visor, chasing down CZWC, but actually they're gonna take Soggy out here. But from behind oh. a rampage by Yoko, is it going to be enough? Can they clutch out this fight with the help of a Kitsune rush coming through by Zexo? There, there might be enough. There goes Bubble Kitty. Lumi finds paper bag and what looked like a fight that was finally going to go hey, anything okay's way is actually starting to get turned around once again in La Seraphim's favor. And more pushing in favor for the side of Lesser FM. They are on to the second part of the push. I didn't think okay have got a huge gap 
to cover for. And there's only three minutes left on the clock. They do have to change things up a little bit, be it the composition or maybe the way that they play. Lesser Elfim has been on to their butt for the longest time ever, and Lumi has been quite a menace. Oh, and speaking of a menace, Lumi taking two once again with their blade and helping Yoko be able they really to, need to counter Genji's. Bubble Kitty just going to be taken out on point, and now the minefields aren't going to stop this push bot. I don't think OK kind of feels like as though that is a, that is kind of like a checkmate thing going on, right? They are picking Ayako up with the uh, Lucio just to counter against the Dragon Blade. You know, some barrier for a Dragon Blade. I like the brick, I like the brick. They can't go for a double support ultimate just so that they will be able to counter Lumi because they need the Suzu just so that they will be able to counter against the Rampage. Otherwise, it's just going to be... Brick is really good against menace. Wrecking Ball. It's, I, it's an either or situation. Do or you don't. You can't, oh, you can't stun him like in Overwatch 1, but in if you time your so shoot bashes and you're shooting properly, he can't kill you either. From Ioko, just to try and keep the remaining players of Ioko K alive, Rally has come out now in the spawn doors. The Seraphim really oh. just just pumping up the damage. Yoko getting a couple of good picks, but CZWC taking one to their name as well. Bubble Kitty finally taking out Azalea here, and they might be able to finally stop this push from happening. Finally, take things back for themselves. The robot just but the push is so far already. We only have one, minute, one and a half minutes left. Seconds left on the clock. With Soggy as well as Yoko both having got the attack visor as well as a rampage of The problem with push is like once you push really far, it's kind of hard to lose the advantage. It's yeah. The first team to push far right is almost always gonna win in push. Man, and speaking of rampage, there it is. It's like a right snowball effect. WZ, Soggy now coming in from the back line to try and get the couple of picks with the tech visor. Just gets the one, but it's still going to be enough to be able to help finish off Ayako here and that push bot going back to the spawn doors. I don't think that I and DOK have got much time left on the clock. With one minute left, and the only ultimate that they are gonna have to work with is going to be the Kitsune Rush. I have to win a single round, but to endure another fight is gonna be really tough. Yeah, and with this fight happening inside the sweet little alleyway here, it's not looking so good for anything okay. They need to get a couple of picks and quickly. And with Lumi taking out Vital like that, that's not a good start to this fight. There goes Bubble Kitty. Now it's just down to the tank and the supports, but with a Lumi blade as well. There goes the Kiriko trying to search for the Lucio. Unfortunately, the speed gets them away, but they're once again right back up to that front spawn. I'll call that zoning. All they gotta do is just zone out their opponents and don't give them the chance to touch the robot to go into overtime. 15 seconds left. Lesser of him as well as INC, okay? This upcoming fat, uh, fight is going to be the last. There's the dead eye with a Genji right in your face. It gets quite scary. You don't want to pop it and take yourself out. Oh, that Suzu Ooh. keeping Lumi alive. Oh, so, man. Uh, oh. That's it. Taking down Bubble Kitty. No more DPS for this fight. So it's just down to once again the supports in the tank. Can they do it? I'm going to find Brawl the Moira. Like I say, guys, Moira is really good. Like, you know, people think she's a noob hero. But is she's really, really good. Point. I gotta say, the highlight of that game is not anything when it comes down to Dragon Blades or Rampage or Minefield. It's a small little change, or rather a small little play. Zizo with an immediate Suzu, somehow that that is going to stick in my head for the longest time ever. Oh man, what a fun match right there. Lumi doing a lot of work on that Genji once again. Both of the DPS really good at Genji, and there is oh, congrats, going to Seraphim. Be the win going to the Seraphim. They won, and once again, 3 0 It's how we sing those guys in, in my matches again. <laughs> Mm, yeah, I mean, obviously, there was some extra circumstances there for I, anything okay. Maybe they could have gotten a map had that not affected them, but I don't think you can really walk away from that one saying Le Seraphim was not the better team. So 3-0, they get the win, deserved, of course. They get the 2000 bucks on top of that as well. And of course, as we've said, they put the best foot forward for a possible selection in the Singapore Overwatch World Cup team overall though yeah three three zeros across the board today let's have a look at the the results as well before we do say goodbye for tonight we started off with the new zealand grand final south auckland drillers got the three zero there over winton overwatch 
Siebs then picked up Man, it looks like all Steam Rose is all 3 0. Australia Grand Final, and we've just seen the Singapore Grand Final go 3 0 the way of La Seraph Bim. Overall, you know, some of those 3 0s were not the same as the others. I think you look at them all on paper, you think 3 0, really clean from every single team, but. Yeah, no, I'm put up a pretty decent fight. I thought I anything okay, put up a pretty decent fight as well. Yeah, on the second like, which really felt like a massively one-sided game was pretty much, in my opinion, the New Zealand uh, grand final opera. I mean, South Auckland Drillers 3-0 against Winston, Winton Overwatch. I think there was maybe like one round of control that felt like Winton Overwatch yeah. could win that, but everything else was the way of South Auckland Drillers. Mm -hmm. Honestly... Percent. Yeah, I would I would definitely be, uh, agree with that as well, right? Mm. Uh, I didn't think okay. Um, they they definitely could have come up on top, but regardless of all of that, the Seraphim they won this entire. Uh, they they won for the Singapore Regionals. They are getting themselves a guaranteed spot for the tryouts, not necessarily the World Cup. So. There could still be a chance for the members from I and Think OK. And I would love to cover the tryouts as well they if they still be picked up for the broadcast it. Take a look at them. Some of mm. them, they are really high profile players too. Yeah, that pretty much rounds uh, us out for tonight. Uh, Opara, did you have anything you wanted to say before we said goodbye? No, I think I think that's pretty much covered it. I guess congratulations to the teams that have won their two thousand dollar grand prize. Uh, really exciting to see who gets to go through to our uh, to be those representatives for each of these countries separately here. And good luck to the World Cup. Yeah, indeed. And thank you guys for, for watching as well. If you've been here all night, appreciate you sticking around. Congrats again to South Auckland Drillers, Siebs and La Seraphim for picking up the wins in their respective regions. I'll give a quick shout out to Samsung and Neon as well before we do say good night. But thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope... I mean, I, I didn't really say much. I was just watching any of you guys, but <laughs> yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. The, sh the live stream. Give me back my knife. <laughs> now let's let's hope to see Brick in Overwatch World Cup. Thanks again for watching guys. Stay gold everybody. Bye bye.